Good afternoon. How's everybody doing? Good to have a full house in here, guys. Good to see. I was a little worried. It's me and two other guys. Um, but nonetheless, I'm happy you guys are here. Um, we're going to be um, just, uh, I'll be in Photoshop, and I'm going to be going over all these tools in here for the next hour. Not really, guys. I'm not doing anything in Photoshop. Because it's gotten a little intimidating. Actually, who's, I, honestly, it, Photoshop's gotten a little intimidating over the years, right? I don't even know what version we have, like version 13 or something, 22 years old. Yeah, it's a little scary. So the goal of this session is for it to not be scary, all right? It should be easy, and I want to give you guys some uh, sort of real-world things to uh, think about, take with you, and implement, OK? So again, apologies. I just uh, have some issues with uh, good old Keynote earlier, so I'm just going to click through these slides. All right, so again, uh, my name is Paul Tranny. I work for Adobe. Uh, my background is design, but I just I fake being a developer sometimes. And uh, my goal for you guys, if, actually, who's doing design just by a show of hands? And these are the people that are going to be sitting like with their arms crossed, judging everything I say, which is awesome. But again, you know, it's, hopefully it's reaffirming for you. Everybody else, I assume, is developers and can probably code circles around me, which uh, again um, is, is pretty awesome. Uh, but overall, um, my background is design. Um, you guys are here to learn about uh, design, to how to implement it basically for your projects. And you know, why does it matter for you? Well, whether you like it or not, you know, what things look like matter. Let's face it, we're in a visual world. Um, I am pulling up this set study. Uh, attractive things work better. That doesn't make any sense. No, sir. It's like if you click on a button, it doesn't matter what it looks like. It'll still take you to that location or whatever. But they've done studies, and they take a typical sort of ATM. And one ATM will be the really pretty ATM and has, you know, everything's nice clean buttons, designed really well. And then they have the version where they just didn't spend any time on the design. And pe even though they worked the same, people thought the more, the, um, the more designed... Uh, ATMs actually worked better. So I'm going to try to, I feel like I'm hiding down here, but that's just kind of the podium. Um, so again, if I could just kind of zoom in on that. Just give me one second. Just zoom in on, there we go, okay. So both forms were identic identical in function, the number of the buttons and everything like that. Um, and s some of them, one of them had the buttons and screens arranged attractively. And the Japanese found that this attractive one was easier to use, all right, just because it was prettier, all right? And you could say, oh, that's the, that's the Japanese. They got everything clever and everything slick over there in Japan, right? That's what I think. I think everything's awesome over in Japan. But they replicated this study on the other side of the world in Israel with the same results, OK? So that's sort of why it matters, OK? I want things to look good, uh, even sort of a case in point. A uh, coworker created this app, and this was sort of a starting point. And uh, you can, it's the, the Caltrain Times app, which you can actually get on the App Store today. Uh, lists out the times at the top and a, little wheel, a couple wheels at the bottom. I really can't make sense of it. He, he explained it to me. I'm like, OK, I get it. Times, and now then you pick you know, from, to, OK, OK. Uh, well, again, sort of taking that from a designer's perspective, this is what it has ended up looking like. OK, so it's like, let's select your starting point, And right here, you can see select your destination. Pretty straightforward easier to use, everybody's happy, all right? So we're going to talk about five things. First one, I hope you do not get offended about this, by the way. I think the key thing here, guys, uh, you might not be a designer. Just like I'm not a developer, I'm saying I know my limitations. At the end of the day, just because I have Creative Cloud and have access to all the apps and have access to, uh, you know, After Effects doesn't make me a video guy. I like to think I could do everything, but I can't. Okay, sort of at, at my core, I tend to be more interactive design. So, um, but again, our goal for you guys is for you to fake it really well. I want you to fake being a designer, okay? And uh, again, this is funny. Sure, if you're kind of wondering, well, which am I? 
Or which shirt do you think is more entertaining? Yo, that kind is tight! Or that other shirt that I don't understand. There are only 10 types of people in the world, those who understand binary and those who don't. What, is, what are they talking about? That's like nonsense. All right, so which one do you gravitate toward? And you know, I appreciate both, but kind of know who you are as an individual and, and then fake it, guys. I'm looking at growing with my development skills. Um, so, and the big thing for design, and again, I'd like to condense my, you know, my, my college career uh, and my career in general into sort of 50 minutes, which I'd love to do. Uh, I don't have time to get into all of it. That's why I simplified it to five things. The second thing is it's really all about leading the eye. This is all, this is so much of what design is. And I see designers, myself included, make these mistakes all the time, leading the eye, because what happens, at least from a designer's perspective, marketing comes to you and they're like, yeah, we wanted you to promote that. Yeah, that should be a big thing. Oh, but we have this other really big thing that's really important. You've got to put that up there, too. Both are really big and important. Oh, and then this third thing is really big and important. You need to put that up there, too. So you have three things that are competing for your attention. And that's not how your eye works. You can't focus on three things at once. We want you to lead your eye. So let me just show you a little more what I'm talking about as I launch Chrome. Give it one second. Again, you can lead the eye a number of ways. All right, so let me just take this off and again, this will launch in a second. There we go. All right, so let's jump in here. Just a, a quick little test as I select this. Okay, we'll open this up. So you can lead the eye in terms of size, color, contrast, position, all sorts of things. So uh, you'll see sort of, I want to see, or actually show you guys what you guys uh, sort of gravitate toward the most out of these three items. Again, as soon as it opens, as I ramble on until it loads, and speak nonsense for another. Help me, Chrome. <laughs> Jeez. And that's leading the eye. So as you were able to see, that will actually load in a second. I literally, my computer crashed as soon as I was ready to present, and now it's kind of recovering things. Oh, thank goodness. All right. So what do you read first? What do you guys say? Just holler it out. What do you say? A, B, or C? C. Thank you. Next up. C. See, I was noticing a pattern. What, what about there? What about that one? I don't know, could be, could, could be C. I don't know, kind of drawing my eye to that area. It gets a little more complex, but yes, yeah, C being encompassed. Color, even in there. Again, which one there? We're having fun with size. You see those lines? I almost get my eye drawn to A a little more since it's in the upper, upper uh, um, left. Okay, but the whole idea of this, these lines pointing to C again there, okay? So we've just quickly ran over many different examples of using contrast color, all the stuff that designers do uh, to uh, draw your eye and lead your eye into different places. Again, marketing wants A, B, and C to be the most popular things, but you need to establish hierarchy. And you need to break down pages in terms of reads, as it's known, all right? So what should be read first? All right, so let's go back. Bear with me. And we can get into more of this. I'll skip those slides. Uh, and, and this is where I show you how smart I am by talking about the golden ratio does this, and it's this curve, and it's 1.61857, I don't even know, but it's a way of dividing up things. Again, this is art school stuff. It actually is one, which is like from here to here, this is one by 1.618, all right? Kind of complex, we don't need to get into that, but the thing is, you never really want to take a screen and divide it down the middle. Because again, it's that read. What do I focus on, the left or the right? In this case, I kind of see, again, uh, sort of have a larger area, and then I have a smaller area. Read one, read two. Okay, and then you get this Nautilus approach. Again, you can get really technical 
and start seeing numbers everywhere, and you do start seeing this ratio everywhere in art and architecture, and with your arm, it's like from your hand, tip of your finger to your wrist is one, and then the point, uh, the 1.618 is from your wrist to your elbow. Your finger is broken down that way. You can analyze the face. You see this ratio. But the key thing is it's almost like this imbalance. One area is larger than another area. Key thing for you is to not necessarily divide uh, something down the middle. Uh, in the case of even, say, Twitter, for instance, you have, if I did an overlay of the 1, one by 1.618, you'd get the 1 right here and the 1.618 as this larger portion. So I can overlay that and you'd get that exactly, which is really cool. And there's other examples of that that would just really start to uh, blow your mind. Uh, well, there's this example, iCloud. It's like those circles, they've taken this ratio and implemented it in icon. That's a little, that's a little nuts, right? Let's, let's scale it back a little bit. Think about buttons, for instance, or shapes. So which ob uh, object is easier to look at? We got one that's going to poke me in the eye, right? And the other one's smooth, and it's like, okay, I can, okay, I can put it in my hand. And you, you kind of, since I said that, pokes you in the eye, you kind of see that. But it has all these angles that your eye has to follow, all these sharp edges, okay, which is also equated to the uh, rectangle. Again, you've got these sharp edges, and some designers will say you kind of lead your eye out because you have like four arrows pointing four different directions, okay? But you do have this hard shape. That's why, again, these sort of the whole idea of rounded rectangles has gotten to be really popular. Keeping your eye within this contained unit, nice and smooth. And then what did they do for iOS 7? Some of you guys probably noticed on your phones. The, they've changed that curve, and it's subtle, but it actually is a lot smoother. And uh, an article, a guy did an article on it. But there's a subtle change in the curve of those rounded corners because they're making it easy on your eye for you to look at it. Okay, so yeah, somebody's probably just making up stuff and staying employed at Apple. I don't know. <laughs> Either way, they adjusted the curve slightly, and now, oh, you're blowing my mind. <laughs> Still, it's pretty awesome to have that. Um, and again, I, I'm going to try to play this, but I said, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to show you sort of my, uh, you know, how you would execute this. We know about leading the eye. But how does this look sort of in a real world scenario? Um, so I'm just going to, if you can give me two seconds, I will prop this up in my hand and kind of go from there. All right, so again, the whole idea of a, a real world project. And just bear with me as I jump in here. I want to uh, take a look at, rather than having you guys watch me design, I figured I'd just do like a recording. So um, I'm actually really fast at designing. Not really. But check this out. I've just sped up this design process. So again, all the elements that are part of my project, just consider this a website. How I need to establish a hierarchy. So I'll just play this. And so what do I do? I start moving content around. Okay. And again, really fast. I apologize. But again, sort of determining what's going to be most important, which I know they have a promo at the top, and then they need to talk about sort of what they're all about and how it benefits you. All right, and then I just start to manipulate these different, the menus and uh, the additional promos, which is this swim, hike, and camp. All right, but you can start to see this hierarchy that I'm establishing, putting the stuff. Nobody really wants to be contacted, by the way. That's why contact's at the bottom. <laughs> Like, no, no, don't really con, it's there, but don't worry, let's hide it, right? Um, and again, even, even going beyond that, I'm like, okay, I, I have all these boxes, let's at least add that gray box, and I wanna, I wanna, I'm trying to break up the monotony of all these squares. But I've s established somewhat of a hierarchy. And if you go through studies and, you know, if, uh, of sort of leading your eye, technically, they've done studies. Have you guys seen sort of like the first read on a page is still the, uh, the upper left? And then you're supposed to kind of gradually go down to, you know, the lower right. But it should just be a nice, smooth motion as your eye kind of travels through this design, okay? But I'm mainly establishing hierarchy there. All right. So that's our project that we'll kind of, I'll, I'll click into as we go through. 
So we have our gray boxes. Not, it's not sexy. It's not sexy yet, but we've kind of broken it up so we have some imbalance and it should get more interesting now as we go forward. But as we take a look, how do we deal with color and imagery, right? And I, I've lumped color and imagery into one, okay? Because th people think they have to pick colors. You don't need to pick colors, really. Oftentimes it comes from the logo and that stuff's already established. But don't feel like you need to use color just to use color. It shouldn't be used, again, uh, as Alexander White says, use color to emphasize importance, not decorate a page. So my final design you guys see, I use, I use dark gray and I used imagery. Okay, so you'll, you'll see that, but again, and I want to actually show you, if you're interested in picking c colors, I want to empower you to do so, something called Cooler. So you can go to cooler.adobe.com. Let's just jump out there. Cooler, with a K.adobe.com, is going to give you a color wheel. And, uh, it takes the fundamentals of, uh, of, um, of color psychology and all that stuff uh, in this color wheel. It will give you your complementary colors, all that stuff. So let's have it load up. So again, you have complementary colors. You're, you're going to have um, uh, you know, a triad complementary. There's different ways to look at this. You'll have colors that are sort of uh, have the same hue and same intensity, uh, might be different. And again, we're just waiting for it to load. The key thing I usually do here is you have your color wheel, and the complementary color is always going to be the opposite. Okay, and some of you might know this. What's the complementary color to red? Good. Think Christmas, that's what I think. What about orange? Yeah, Broncos, I'm from Colorado. Um, you guys, uh, purple? Yeah, Lakers, so that's all I got for you. But that's what you'd do, is you'd pick the, sort of your primary color, the main color you wanna go with, and then also select the complementary. And usually I'll do like a split complement, and again, as soon as this loads up, uh, I will be happy to show you, I'm really excited, so. All right, good thing I got the... Uh, as we dive into this a little, bear with me, as I might be able to open up something else that might help us out. Okay, here we go. So here's a local version. Primary colors. We have our secondary colors. It doesn't really matter. I don't really care. Again, what I care about is my, my, my complement or my split complement. Okay, so if my main color is uh, going to be like a blue, I know I can pick like an orange and then a yellow as my opposing colors. So oftentimes it's your primary color, blue, everybody loves blue. Secondary for uh, your secondary color on, on a page if you need it. And then your third color, that yellow can be your highlight. So as you click on a button, bam, something happens. So that's typically how I uh, pick colors, all right? Make sure they're complementary. And then as far as their hue and intensity, you need to make sure they're the same intensity. Okay, so if you've got a muted dark blue, you're going to have a dark red. Okay, usually don't go bright red neon with a dark blue. All right, so they have to ma match in intensity as well. All right. Uh, that is actually largely helpful uh, when it comes to There we go, finally. All right, here it is. So, um, and it's actually still loading up slowly, but this will allow me to go through everything I talked about. And again, this is your research source, cooler.adobe.com. I can start to say, pick my colors. Okay, I wanna go more orange there. It, it's kind of somewhat locked, because it's saying, hey, you know what? Let's make sure they're kind of the, uh, the complementary colors is what's happening there, all right? And picking that accordingly, all right? So that's, that is cooler. You can see right over here, complementary, just like I just said, are our compound colors, are different shades of one color, okay? So I can always pick sort of the same different shades of one color. Obviously, they have something in common, but they're a little bit different as well. All right. I like this, guys, if you ever, uh, this is brand new, but uh, I can pick colors from an image. 
So I'm just going to jump out here and grab this background. And this is what Cooler allows me to do, is sample various colors from that photo. All right? So if I do have this photo on my page, I might consider taking colors from it, again, thanks to Cooler. And I can go bright, go a little bit darker if I want to. But again, it's within the same sort of color family. And I can always adjust that as well. I see it gets a little something going on down there. I can go ahead and select that too. All right. So that's what I would use. You can start to explore various themes. You can see I have my themes. If I hit, click Explore, you'll see the most popular colors. If you just want to take something and run with it, it's here. And I'm hesitant in going into some of this just because I don't want color to sort of dominate the conversation or just be added to a page just for fun, right? Uh, we want to make sure it has purpose when we add it. OK. So again, what are you going to do? You're going to use imagery. And that's what I've done as well. Uh, if we take a look, again, we've established the uh, layout. But let's sort of start to drop in imagery. And uh, the next slide talks about using imagery, guys. It's like images, if you want something that's a quick read, an image will, will get you there. This Adventure Co. site is all about adventures and outdoors and things like that. I can write about that all day long, or I can actually have show somebody snorkeling, right? And that's a quick read. People are going to get it right away. They know what the site is all about, and uh, they can go forward from there. Again, just communicating information is what we're doing. If you guys are curious, I'm using Reflow. That's the, the uh, app I'm using. But again, jumping in there. Pretending like I'm doing it right now. Not really. Um, but again, selecting those images and breaking up a lot of that monotony, as you can see. So obviously for a video, I'm going to have something like an image, a frame from that video. All right. And starting to add imagery to uh, the different promos here as well. OK, so jumping in there. I'll skip ahead a little bit as I start to play with this dropping in those different images that show uh, exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, But we've definitely broken it up. Notice how I've largely uh, used, I have color, or excuse me, I have these photos that have sort of similar colors. We're within the blue-green range. If I wanted to highlight anything, I would pick like an orange. I would take that orange from that chair right there, something like that, if I wanted to give something a little pop, or even take that sort of lighter green if I wanted something to pop. But obviously, we can see what this has already done to this particular page. Uh, it did bring it to life. We have a nice background back there that doesn't distract from the content, but hopefully sort of uh, adds to the story that we're trying to tell, which is all about sort of these outdoor adventures that you can take. All right. So again, let's move on. Uh, obviously, that's what I've done, is I've taken this imagery and brought this content to life. I've shown you that video. And now that we have our imagery in there, and we have our layout, I've kind of skipped over color. I didn't even apply any color to that page, guys. I didn't really need it. After I added all those images, it really didn't need anything in addition. All right. But what about using text and typography? All right, which is a big one. Because as a designer, if I looked on the designer's computers, you probably, pro you probably have like 200 fonts. And I have like 200 fonts, but I really only use about 10 of them. You do. I think when you first get started in the field, you're like, oh, awesome, cool fonts, and I'm going to load it, and blah, blah, blah. No, I end up going with Helvetica New. <laughs> and the different weights for a good reason. All right, but I'm going to kind of take you through that process. Because again, it's largely it ends up less being more. Um, and again, I'm not going to get crazy on you when it comes to typography, because it really has one job, which is to convey information in writing. Because again, what do I do as a designer? I make te text gray on a white background at eight point, because it just looks cool. But it's illegible, so you have to just make it legible at the end of the day. All right. Uh, there's different ways of doing this. Again, legible font. We want to make sure we're choosing a, fo a font that fits the subject. And we don't want to use more than three. So definitely not. Um, oftentimes, 
we can talk about the pairing of those fonts. But you have different font styles. So um, I wouldn't want to use an old style font face for some new technology I'm talking about. I wouldn't even really want to use it with uh, any sort of like um, a, uh, a serif font for new technology. All right. Um, I might go with sort of more of a modern fa font. Um, but what I'm going to encourage you guys to do, again, pointing resources to you guys, is Typekit, for instance. Okay, so whether, whether you know it or not, jump out to Typekit, and whether you're using Typekit or not, they do a great job in helping me determine which fonts to use. Because it's going to allow me to sort through my serif, my sans serif fonts. It will allow me, if I'm looking for a font for a heading, I can literally select a button that says heading, and it will give me more of those fonts that have more character to them for my heading. And again, we'll just uh, wait for it. Somebody must be watching videos or something in the other room. But we'll have this load up. Typekit. Again, I love the, the plethora of... Uh, of fonts available, which you can easily get lost in. But you'll start to see right over here off to the side, yeah, sure, I can sort through all of them. You'll see them load up. But it's the idea of these classifications. So everything I just showed you on the slide are basically right over here. I have my decorative, my hand. Sure, if I'm creating something for Halloween, I'll jump into decorative, sure. OK, if I want to be more straightforward with things, I probably want to go with a serif or sans serif. Uh, what's getting pretty popular, I feel like slab serifs are pretty popular right now. These really thick slabs, again, is those serifs right here, that slab serif, you can see that's, again, that thick weight as opposed to tapering out. Again, just a style that's current right now. Another thing with uh, designers is the whole idea of these really luscious, beautiful script type fonts are available. So I can cruise through all of these and I can sort by them as I select sab, sand, slab, sa, slab serif. So slab serif, there we are, right down here. I don't have time to get into this, guys, but this is awesome. Desktop use, awesome. Oh, check this out. Recommended for headings. Perfect. I need a font for a heading. Click. That happens to be like a slab serif. I can sort through all of those. Again, I like slab serif. I can jump in and say, hey, you know what? Adele is a great font choice uh, in that case. All right? And I can click and start seeing the different weights of it and all that good stuff. Uh, but overall, I have that ability to uh, view the uh, sort of paragraph text and then the heading text. A lot of designers will go with a. Um, a uh, sans serif or serif font for your heading and then a sans serif font for your text. So they'll go, they'll go the opposite. Um, again, so much I need to talk about in, in here. Um, there's more things we can talk about with fonts. Um, I, I wanna, if I'm picking two really different fonts, I want to make sure that they have some characteristics that tie them together. A lot of times that's the X height. So if I have an O, if that O is small, I want to pick an opposing font where the O is small. It doesn't matter what it looks like, but make sure they have that same X height so they have that continuity between the two. All right. Again, here's the, um, here's the font. I can read about it, but chances are you're probably going to use that, uh, uh, the ability to sort through your fonts on the previous menu. But you can read about it. Uh, they've done it. We've done a good job as far as updating the various uh, blogs and talking about type. And then you can get into font properties down here as well. OK, so pretty straightforward what we can do there. We can start to implement it. Again, since this is, you know, I can use this for the web. I can actually put it on my desktop. But uh, again, once I am ready, I can go ahead and use that font on my desktop as well. So that is Typekit. That's your quick way to pick fonts. I'd say don't get elaborate. At the end of the day, it just needs to be able to convey information in writing, and that's it. Okay. If you guys are interested in font sizes, we can get into that as well. Obviously, you just want it to be large enough to be read, but not to be gaudy. Okay. I'm throwing lots of tips at you guys, by the way, because another another way to do things and make text look really elegant, at least on a larger page, is to increase the line height, otherwise known as the letting. 
So the, the line height, if you increase that, it actually does sort of make your page a little more uh, elegant looking as opposed to having all your type scrunched up in one spot. So let's take a look at what I did there. Again, back to our project for fonts. And again, I sort through, which I'm glad I did the screen recording so we don't have to wait for pages to load. Jumping in, uh, searching for fonts. I end up picking one here in a second. And again, I like the slab serif. I think it's just really cool looking. It has some, some weight to it, seems really bold. And uh, I start to implement it in my design. I go through the paragraph text, and I've picked Source Sans Pro. I've picked a font that has lots of different weights, because that makes it more flexible for me. I go into my design. My slab serifs up at the top for the logo. And again, this is real time, guys. I didn't, I didn't do any editing other than speed this up. So I've made mistakes in here. But you can see me using that Typekit font uh, in Reflow and uh, just making that font available. But now I start applying that Source Sans Pro font. All right, And you can see me start to play with it over here for this word outside. I start toggling through it. Again, I'm picking that really elegant thin font because my text is so large. I didn't want it to look like it's slapping you in the face. So usually the larger I go, I tend to make my fonts thinner. And it just adds that nice elegant look to it. You can see my letting or my line, my line height. And again, I started playing with this, guys, and I did a horrible job, as you'll, as you'll see me kind of like play with this. I'm like, oh, let's try something unique and blah, blah, blah. I'm talking about fonts. Let's do something kind of cool. And it just wasn't working, right? It's like, ah, I don't know about that other font. That's not bad, but it's not, it's not a good lockup with that logo. All right, I started just screwing around, guys, making mistakes. I'm like, what am I doing? And then, at, and then at some point, I call, I'm calling about reservations for something. So you'll see, you'll see the screen change. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I got a call. So I'm on the call. I'm like designing stuff and uh, making a mess. And look, so I ended up back where I started, which is funny. I had to go around and try this other stuff and uh, realize it was horrible before I came back to this, this final version, which is just uh, a little more tightly locked up. And as I start pl to play with that text as well, um, you can see sort of the, again, just the, the final design. I didn't get all crazy with the font, guys. It's like the imagery for this should say it all. And let's let them know that it's a modern adventure, that we're not going to just give them some rope and uh, matches and send them on their way. And this is a, a modern uh, business that we're running here. All right. So we can move on from that. We've taken a look at uh, fonts. I encourage you to use Typekit. Um, and like I said, I think, I think a lot of people, when they, maybe when they get Photoshop, they start screwing with things and changing and manipulating images. Same thing with fonts. Oh, Typekit, I can access all these fonts. Do you really want to use all those fonts? And you'll know as a seasoned designer, you're like, I use more of the Helvetica New, uh, Gil Sands fonts more often than not. OK, and then you can get fun with it. Uh, get feedback from others, okay? So I've, I've, I've created this design. I didn't add color to it. I think it's pretty cool, but that's me in my hotel room doing a recording earlier today. <laughs> and I want to see what other people think of it. So I would, again, me working remote, I don't have an opportunity to be in front of you guys and show off things. So I would have to get feedback from others, which is huge. Very huge, even from a, a designer's perspective, to get feedback from others, intelligent feedback. So again, let's just try jump out here and see how this will load up. Um, but Behance is one of those sites, a community of designers around the world, a huge community. You're talking over a million members. I was reading the other day, we, uh, Behance uh, has a thousand new members like sign up each day, which is a ton. All right, again, we'll have this load up in a second. You'll see all this work that people post so you're about to get really jealous of how awesome this stuff is and that you didn't make it. That's how I feel. All right. But I can post work here as well. 
And again, since we're tacking, tapping into creatives, you'll get really good feedback with this uh, by posting content. It's not like posting a video to YouTube and reading the comments and just feeling terrible about yourself, right? <laughs> it's like, oh, I'm so, you're right, I need a haircut or whatever. I don't know. It's just like off of these little things. Um, and again, we'll wait for it to load. It's, it's really intelligent conversation. In fact, I think I might have it running up here. Um, if you don't mind, uh, some comments might be in here. Here we are. So um, anyways, this is Creative Cloud. I'm not here to talk about Creative Cloud. I'll be talking about it in, um, in a little bit. But uh, I've basically uploaded work to, uh, to Behance. And I'm pulling in uh, what I've uploaded. But the important thing is I'm able to get feedback. And hopefully, if it loads, you guys will see that. It's really intelligent stuff. What was one of my comments with my design so far? It was, it looks a lot like Windows 8. It looks very Windows 8-ish. And it does. You guys are exactly right. Maybe that's what I'm going for. I was like, hey, that is actually good feedback. There was other parts where my, my design wasn't lining up. Not all the panels were aligned, OK? And it's like, I don't want something to be off a little bit. It should just like, if, it fe it's, if it's close, just, just line it up, OK? That's why I was working in Reflow, because Reflow gives me the ability to have this grid system, all right? And uh, again, my work, my activity, scrolling down. Let's try to find some of those comments. Again, while that page is loading up, we should be able to see it here in a second. A oh, works in progress. This is what I've uploaded, a work in progress. And uh, again, it's that exact same design that I've uploaded. And I've already gotten some feedback on it. So uh, again, so just waiting for it to load. It might be, one, it might be this one. Uh, but you'll get that feedback. So wait for it. So I've implemented that feedback. And I, I just say that's really crucial. Like, I, far be it from me to think I know what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Because I really don't. I know the first job I got as a designer, I got somebody else a job there, another designer. And you know what? She couldn't accept any sort of feedback for her work. And nonetheless, she was fired. She was there less than a year, and they let her go because she couldn't accept feedback from others. All right? Uh, and that's what that allows you to do is, um, is get feedback. So again, try that out for yourself. Uh, and uh, just upload whatever you want, and you'll get really compelling feedback from it. And then you can start to implement that content as well. And again, that's Behance. All right, so again, kind of know your limitations. Learn how to fake being a designer. Uh, again, I was only allowed 50 minutes to turn you guys, to give you guys some good tips. Look at leading the eye, sort of what has primary, secondary, tertiary focus, whether that's size, uh, color, shape. Use uh, color and imagery to capture attention and also tell a story. OK, so all my colors actually just would have come from a photo. And that's what I've implemented. Use fonts sparingly. Just because you have access to all of them, you don't want to necessarily use them all. And then get feedback from others. So what I can do is I can just load up sort of the final site. Because the last thing I want to point out before you guys leave is uh, sort of the sixth thing. It's just like, just have fun with it at the end of the day. Make, I like to make compelling content, OK? And uh, that's what I ended up with as I take a look at this. Let's just jump to at least where it's at today uh, as I continue to work on it. So again, this is my local version. Might have an issue with uh, getting the fonts. And uh, again, it just has that background. We'll see this content load up in a second. Again, sorry things are so slow right now. But it'll load up this site. There's my background. We'll see this content as it will load. Wait for it, folks. Or I can actually post it to Twitter if it does not load, because my computer does not like me today, apparently. It's the Wi-Fi here, not you. OK, gotcha. Well, what's interesting is this is actually local. There's no reason this shouldn't open up right now. 
I know it's probably hitting, I have some, I'm pulling down some, some, some fonts and things like that, so it might be that slow that it's uh, the uh, Wi-Fi that's kind of jacking with things. Okay. But again, I was able to use some CSS, there's some CSS transitions and some other content in there to uh, bring this stuff to life. So you can see it right here, it's like I have my homepage. Uh, you know, adventures, loading in those graphics, everything is aligned. In this case, I don't necessarily have hierarchy. This is more like six menu items that I can pick from, but I tried to establish that to a certain degree, as you can see right here. And again, going back, and this is responsive. And again, I did this in Reflow, giving you the ability to sort of shuffle through and uh, have that reformat accordingly. But I also wanted to add a cool factor, and this is what I was talking about, make it just awesome. I'm telling a story right there. You see, see that animation? You can see that content slide in. That's HTML. And again, I wanted to tell that story of being outside. And that's what I, I had to do that using animation. There's even a little bit of interactivity just for fun as we like touch those little butterflies and they fly off. It's like I'm delighting users with that. You know, I'm not even selling anything. It's just fun. And, uh, and then a little Easter egg, if you click the guy, they attack him, <laughs> just for fun. For no reason, guys. Okay, so, yeah. So let's just have some fun with this, and that's kind of what I got into, is like looking at designs, having fun with things, uh, being clever, you know, with whether, whether you're writing or designing anything. Uh, I love that. Let's just be clever and innovative and, uh, uh, understand what I said this past, you know, 45 minutes and then throw it out the door and make something more awesome uh, is my goal for you. All right, guys. That's some closing remarks and then you guys are done. I know we're after hours. Um, don't try to be great. Try to be invisible. Sure, I'd love to win awards, but at the end of the day, I want things to work and, and be awesome because they're making money for my client. Uh, don't put a starburst behind it. Okay, because this is something we get, ah, can you just make a call, you make a call, like, can it pop? Can you give me a pop? Can you do a blink? Can you do a blink? No, I can't do a blink. Um, don't use yellow text on a white background. Don't use Comic Sans, unless, is that okay? I'm sorry, maybe you want to. You could be doing a comic book, but that's all I have for you guys. Thank you very much.